Girl, look in the mirror Man, you so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I want to tell you, what I want to talk about in this reaction video is the fact that there are many women today, um, black women in particular, is thrown in this group who are voluntarily giving up their rights, their parental rights to their children, to the state. And if you're not familiar with this story... I'm going to show you a news clip first, and then I'm going to show you one of the women who have actually done this thing, and I'm going to give you a woman who want to come in on it, okay? It's a terrible thing. They're not waiting for these children. Um, they're giving up these children when they're in their teenage years. So the child actually has a chance to actually have a relationship and knowledge of the parent. It's messed up. So let me go ahead and show it to you. One second, y'all. I'll put it on you all screen. Boom. This is a news clip just to familiarize you with what's going on. This is taking place in Virginia in this particular case. Let's get it. Voluntarily giving up their kids as they get older, close to being teens or in their teen years. It is a huge problem in Virginia, specifically in our part of the Commonwealth. It's called relief of custody. Hundreds have been filed in just the past five years. 10 News investigates what's going on and the group working to find solutions thought of basically giving up your kid is wow i can't think about that right i mean to think of a parent being faced with a decision of how do i keep my younger kids safe how do i keep myself safe how do i keep the child the teenager that i love safe and feeling like they're failing at that what a feeling that must be right that they feel like they have no choice but that's the choice parents are faced with. There's an increase of parents filing for relief of custody. When a parent decides they're unable to take care of their child, they ask the court to relieve them of custody. Typically, the child would then go into foster care. Renee Brown is the CEO and president of DePaul Community Resources. She's part of a group the state put together to try and solve the issue. They're usually in crisis mode. They have usually tried a lot of different things. They feel like they have no choice. Usually there's a safety issue. They are either afraid of their child, afraid of the choices their child is making. It's happening in family. You see, these parents are not what they used to be back in the day. The, ch the parents are afraid of their children. Now, when she says crisis, it ain't always financial or some kind of burden like that. Some of them are giving up their children simply because their baby daddies don't want to help take care of them. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But these parents today, most of them, not all, but these who doing this right here, not because of financial burden. Even then, why would you give up your child? Huh? Why would you give them up? Or her? You took care of them until they got 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. Like that lady say, they are just letting these children go in their teenage years, abandoning them to the state, signing over their parental rights, the children that they brought into this world. Some are mother and fathers. Some of them are single parent mothers. I haven't found any single parent father yet, according to my research, might be one. But so far what i found is women and also couples that's doing this. Why? But let's keep going, because I gotta get to the woman who actually did this. Let's get to the clip so you can understand what's going on before we get to that clip. Families with limited resources to upper middle class families who have a lot of resources and insurance and nothing seems to be working. People don't realize how big of a problem this is, especially here. In the western part of the state, um, we have about 20% of the population, but we have probably close to 50% of the relief of custodies. Eric Reynolds is the Damn. director of the Office of Children's Ombudsman, who's also looking for solutions. What parent would want to be relieved of custody of their own kid? It's highly unusual, but when you look at the situations, whether it's grandma, when it's an adoptive, family that doesn't have a history of that child and the foreign adoptions when they don't have the medical or trauma history of that child and all of a sudden you know things start happening so you can understand the predicament they're in he spoke like a true no good for nothing lawyer if you all right if you're going to adopt the child you should be able to understand that there are going to be some things that come along with that child don't adopt the child stay with the child for 10 years and then say you know what 
I didn't know that you're going to feel this way. Let me go ahead and kick you back into the... That don't make any sense, man. Now, I understand you might have to turn your children over to some people. If you got a grandma raising the kid and she's in bad health, so you got to pass it to maybe the, um, the what is it, the aunt? Or, I get stuff like that within reason. But these women are just doing this now simply because they don't want to take care of their damn kids, man. They don't want to take care of their kids. Now, let me put this lady on the screen I told you about a while ago. And she's going to try to explain why she gave up her children. Because her baby daddy did not want to help. Five of them, I think. Five or four children. Let's get it. Five children. Yeah. What age are you? I'm 27. Prior to me giving them up, I already had that thought in my head a year prior. I didn't have nobody to watch the kids. So when I reached out to, um, when I reached out to the girl's dad, now mind you, I ain't thought about laying with this man. My, my, my daughter's about to be three, you know, about to be three. And you laid with him at least five times or more to have these kids, okay? And you're upset because he, you couldn't get no help. It ain't the community's responsibility or your neighbor's responsibility to raise your children. And I can't stand when these women talk bad about these men, even though they may be deadbeats. But what I can't stand is that you slept with this man, had five different children. He didn't turn into a deadbeat overnight. You should have known before, if not definitely after the first birth of a child, what type of man he was. But your dumb ass decided to give him four more kids. So don't try to paint him as a bad guy when you doing this to yourself. The only ones who suffer is the children. And like I say, he may actually be a deadbeat, and he is if he ain't taking care of his kids. But what does that make you as a woman if you give him not one, not two, not three, not four, but five children? I'm sure he wasn't a good person between child number one and number five, but you chose to stay in there. Now you want sympathy. Now you want to make a GoFundMe account. You want someone to feel sorry for you. I don't feel sorry for your ass. This was a conscious choice you made. Now, you done wrecked and traumatized those young children. It's enough, it's bad enough that the daddies don't want, or daddy, I'm thinking it's just one, this in this case, it's bad enough that the daddy don't want, want to have anything to do with them. So the children already have abandonment issues, and they're going to grow up with abandonment issues, and they're going to grow up with trauma, and they're going to grow up thinking, daddy, don't want me. Now it's another compound trauma that you done gave them. Now, it's not just daddy don't want me, mama don't want me. Two wrongs don't make a right. Man, I tell you, it's stupid, man. Let's keep going. Now, mind you, I ain't thought about laying with this man. My, my, my daughter's about to be three, you know, about to be three in November. I don't want this man. So he, I call him, I'm like, you know, can you help me? I need, can you watch the girls or whatever? He's like, oh, well, don't you got me on child support? Don't you got me on child support? Now, yes, I do have him on... <laughs> Excuse me, I have hiccups. So, um, chronic hiccups is what I mean. But anyway, um, so when I put him on child support a year after my daughter's was born, he didn't start paying until this year. So, and he's only he was only required to pay one hundred and ninety six dollars a month for both my daughters. And he's like, you know, that's taking all my money. And then he's like, well, you're not getting anything outside of that. And it's like, he's like, if you take me off of child support. Um, I could do more for them. And I'm like, nigga, I know for a fact that's a lie because the be whole year before I put you on child support, you didn't, no diapers, no wipes, no, not a damn thing. You, even if you didn't provide any of that shit, you didn't even pick them up so I could go to work and, you know, get all that shit. You know, I could do it by my damn self if you watch them, you know? So it was like, you know, so I know you're lying and shit like that. But anyway, he proceeds to tell me shit that don't matter is that he got another girl and she's pregnant and they about to have another baby. And it was just like... And and that was part of the motivation as to why she gave them kids up. It wasn't just because she couldn't handle them kids. You know, it, it wasn't. It was the fact that he trying to move on. And he was a deadbeat from what I've gathered and stuff like that. But that had something else to do with it. It's the fact that he's, and he, why do men do this? Why do men who can't take care of one child, one family that they created, decide to go over to another woman and then create more children that they can't take care of and then go to another one? You're just messing up the community doing that. Need to sit your ass down somewhere, be a man, get a job, and be responsible. Because if you don't, we got to see stuff like this. I'm more concerned about them children. The children going to probably go to jail, be on drugs, early childhood pregnancy, all because daddy and mama don't want to be there. Now, how does it feel to be a child to not receive the nurturing that you're supposed to be expecting from your mother? 
Now, your mother all over social media, finding time to be on social media on different channels so people can question her and inquire, why did you do this? And she making money off these shows that she going to. So why don't she have enough time to have them kids with her? And how come she ain't taking the money that she, because she be all over the place, this woman right here. How come she ain't taking the money to get her kids back and take care of her kids? This is a selfish woman. She don't want them damn kids, man. She can blame everybody all she want, but she don't want them kids. If a mother want her kids or if a father want her kids, he going to fight for them. He going to give his life for them. This is a woman who is just lazy, don't want to be a woman who has children. She want to go to the club. She want to pop it all night in the club and say, hey, demon time. This is what she want to be. So don't feel sorry for her. I don't. Feel sorry for those children. Okay, so he's pretty much telling me that he's not going to, you know, help me with my daughters because he's moved on. And I'm like, you can move on. That's fine. I don't want to be with you, but you still have daughters, you know? That's sad, man. That's sad. Now, let me show you this. Um, This lady going to give you uh, her opinion about everything you just saw right there. You know what I'm saying? So give me a second I put it on the screen. But that, that's, some, that's some stuff, ain't it, y'all? That, I just don't understand that, man. I don't get it, man. Maybe one of y'all can help me understand that why you can just have children just throw them out there to the woods and turn them over to the state because you're scared of them. You don't want to have that responsibility of raising them because that's what it means, termination of parental rights, meaning that you're no longer um, obligated to that child, meaning you don't have to provide, you don't have to protect, you don't have to clean, you don't have to um, do this and do that. You don't have to be a parent to that child. The child is on their own in foster care or whatever. That means you just don't give a fuck about them no more. I, I don't get it, man. It's unnatural, but let's keep going. Did y'all see that news story going on up in Virginia where hundreds of parents have been turning over their children um, to the state? Yeah, they calling it voluntary termination of parental rights. And parents just been going and surrendering their children, saying that basically it's for the safety, for their safety, in the safety of the other children in the household. Damn. <laughs> it's crazy how growing up in the 80s, our parents didn't have that option. Our parents didn't have that option. Especially in the black community. There was nowhere for us to take and say, hey, we just going to turn our kids over to the states. You know why? Because back then... They wouldn't, uh, there wasn't no parents trying to be their kids' friend like you got them now. All the parents out here, the majority of them, want to be their friend. They want to be their bestie and shit. Back in the day, you knew who the father was, who the mother was, and who the children were. And they would put their hands on you. They would discipline you to get you in a certain mindset, to get your mind right. Parents today are scared now. They weak now. A lot of them are. So the child run the household. The child run all over them. And the reason why these mothers want to be close to their daughters like friends because they have them at such an early age to the point where they see their children as peers, as classmates, as schoolmates, because there's not a real big age gap between them. Now, women having kids 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and by the time um, the child is 20 years old, mama would might be like 31, 32, they almost close to like peers, like college peers and school peers. So they start to dress alike, they go to the same places, they drink the same things, they both act like musty back helpers in the club, they do. They treat their child like they bestie, like they friend, like they onesie, they ace boon coons and stuff, because most women have children when they are not mature now. Most women have children now where they don't have any type of emotional regulation. Women have children now when like they get jealous of their daughters because they think their daughters are their peers instead of their children. That's why you see a lot of that. And that's what's, what's going on right here. Let's keep going. Because we can't handle them and we fear for safety of the other children. Did we have disciplinary issues? Yes, we did. We were not perfect children. But to rise to the level where these parents are feeling like they got to turn their kids over to the state? I'm going to say this. And I know some people, a lot of y'all gonna be sitting up there pissed off, but I'm gonna go ahead on and tell you what I've observed over the years. 
a lot of parents grew their children, but they didn't raise them. They grew their children under their roof. They made sure that they, they had a roof over their head. They made sure that they ate. They made sure they had clothes. They, they made sure that they went to school, but they didn't raise them with men. In other words, they didn't teach them guidelines. They didn't give their children instruction. They didn't lead by example. They simply provided for the child. It's like if you had a pit bull like I do. I have to teach my pit bull how to behave. I can provide for him all day. I can make sure he got a dog house. I can make sure he has his shots. I can make sure he has his dog food. But if I don't teach him how to sit, if I don't teach him how to lay down, if I don't teach him how to be still, if I don't teach him how to socialize with other dogs and people like that, then he's going to run amok and do whatever the hell he wants to do. And that's what you're seeing with these kids now. Mamas are buying them phones, buying them iPads, getting them everything they want. Um, buying them new clothes like that, helping them get this, helping them get that, but they're not teaching them anything. That's why they're doing whatever they want to do. That's why they're running amok because parents today, especially single mothers, because most kids are raised in single mothers' home now, they, the kids are being provided for, but they're not being taught any damn thing. That's what she's trying to say. I know she said grew and raised, but I'm trying to you know, extrapolate it and expound upon what she's saying. You're supposed to train up your child in the way they're supposed to go. You're supposed to teach your children. You're not supposed to be relying on internet and social media and everybody else and Tom, Dick, and Harry to try to teach your kids something. That's why they're acting the way they act right now, because they're being taught by the wrong people. You ever thought about that, Jack? Can you dig it? They didn't raise them with manners, with guidance, they didn't take the time out during the children's most formative years and discipline them. And discipline is not always hitting on somebody. They didn't show them. They didn't give them um, consequences to their actions. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff that they, um, those kids was doing when they was little, they thought it was cute. They never came in and, and intervened and said, hey, don't do that. Whenever somebody else was saying something, they wanted to be like, I don't know me talking to them. You can't say nothing to these children. You, you, as somebody, as a bystander, you can't come in and give the parents those guidance. You can't say nothing to them. Mm -mm. And now it has rose into the level where for so long that they were not teaching these children values, right from wrong, mm -hmm. wasn't sitting down with them and made sure that they knew basic life skills. Right. How to tie their shoe. Mm. How to put their clothes on. Most young men can't read beyond the grade level of eighth or ninth grade right now in the black community. Look it up for yourself. They got a, the, te the teacher ain't supposed to do everything. You're supposed to give them that child tail and light a fire underneath that boy or that girl to get them motivated to clean their room, to be a clean person, to learn how to behave. So the parents are failing the children. Not all, but a lot of them have. You want proof of that? Look outside your window. Look outside, look outside where you go from this point, point A to point B, and look how the teenage boys and the teenage girls are acting and dressing, how they are talking. Act, look at how much trouble they get into. Look at how many times they're getting arrested now. That is evidence that the parents are failing them in some kind of way. I know you don't like what I got to say sometimes. But you can't dispute the truth of it. You can make your excuses. You can say what the hell you want to say. But you cannot tell me or any sensible person that a parent is not supposed to be there teaching their child. You can't. You can make up your excuses all you want. But you should never have had a child if you're not going to be able to take care of it. Now, I'm telling you something that someone would have told you in the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, the 70s, because that's how people used to think back then. That's why you had stronger families back then. That's why you had nuclear families back in the 60s and the 50s and all that stuff in the earlier part of the 70s. Because of the, the way that I'm telling you, when that got abandoned, when that, and people stopped doing that stuff back then, you see how the generation of younger folks are now. You see it now. You want to say back then it was strict, it was just too harsh and stuff, but it kept order. It kept people being productive. It helped people learn how to be a real man, how to be a real woman. It taught men the role of men, and it taught a woman the role of women. Back in those days, it was passed down from generation to generation, and then feminism came in there and just shut the whole thing off. 
Women been getting too many rights. When they got too many rights to where they can just walk off, no fault, divorce, don't even have to be a, a committing adultery, don't even have to put your hand on a woman. It's just the fact that she's bored or she's attracted to somebody else or thinks she can get a better opportunity and think the grass is green on the other side. She can just tear up the whole nuclear family household and do what the hell she want to do. That's when this shit fell apart. properly how to brush their teeth oh i'm back that up they knew basic life skills how to tie their shoe how to put their clothes on properly how to brush their teeth the number of times i don't been out in public and i don't seen parents sitting down doing their thing eating drinking coffee doing whatever and their children are over there doing for themselves, especially at buffet, baby. One thing about this, why I don't do buffets. I don't eat buffets. But a lot of parents were not actively involved in these children's life in their formative years. And now that they are older, they don't have no concept of right and wrong. They have no level of self-accountability, right? right. Because... You just grew them up. You just you just you just, you just let them, you know, grow. But you wasn't teaching them and instill you no know, no values in them. And if I hear one more parent talking about some the influence, the influence, baby, shouldn't nobody have no more influence over your child than you? Bet that's right. I know there's temptations. I know there's bad influences out there. But if you see your child going the wrong path, that should tell you right then and there that you got a man up and woman up. And if that means to dis disrupting their quote unquote childhood happiness because she want to or he want to feel accepted by the peers in their schools and shit, then so be it. You're supposed to be seeing further than them anyway because they're young. They don't know anything yet. You know how life go. You know how the world works. You're supposed to be out there disrupting their lifestyle. You're supposed to be chastising them. You're supposed to be in a, be a wall that's in the way between them and destruction from their choices that they make. You're supposed to be doing that. You ain't supposed to be their friend. You can't do that when you're their friend. You're supposed to be their parents. You can act friendly towards them to show them what friendliness is, but you're not supposed to be besties with them. I don't know. That's some new age crap. That's my bestie. That's my bestie. Back in my day, man, you couldn't call your daddy and mama. Hey, that's my best friend right there, man. He'll smack the hell out of you. I'm your father. I'm your mother. You respect who I am. It wasn't no that, yeah. It was yes, sir, no, ma'am. Some families are different. But it wasn't no dang, you walk off when he talking to you or you walk off when she talking, your mama talking to you because you got an attitude. They do that right now. And mama just let them do it. Don't stop them. Don't check them. Don't make them. You got to teach them kids how to respect you sometimes by forcing them to respect you. When you teach them how to respect you because you are the first persons of authority in their life, the mother and the father or the mother if you're by yourself or the father if you're by yourself, you are the first example of authority to them. You teach them about other people's authority, authority of God or everybody else. If they cannot learn how to respect the authority of you as a parent, then they are not going to respect the authority of a teacher. They are not going to respect the authority of the police. They are not going to respect the authority of people at school. They are not going to respect the authority of anybody. You can't tell them shit. And that's what you got right now is a bunch of young people running around right now that won't listen to wisdom, won't listen to knowledge, won't follow directions. They want to do whatever the hell they want to do because they learn that stuff from their mamas if they're coming up in a single parent home. Hate me if you want to. The proof is in the pudding, like they say. Just look outside your windows and see what you, you tell me if I'm wrong. But anyway, I'll be hollering at y'all pretty soon, y'all. You let me know what y'all think about this, man. Kind of weird, ain't it? Y'all take it easy now, yeah? Ooh.